May I speak in the name of God, who has made us for his delight, who has saved us by his Son, and who encourages us by his Holy Spirit. Amen. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So here is Jesus going about his public ministry quite near the beginning of Mark's gospel. I was listening to an interesting piece on Radio 4 this week, where I have to confess I get most of my information, and it was talking about a project called Quick Reads. I don't know if you've come across it, but it's a wonderful idea to encourage adults who've got out of the habit of reading for pleasure to re-engage with reading a short story. So the quick read is just 11 or 12 pages long, and it's designed to be something enticing, something engaging, something exciting, perhaps a thriller, a bit of a mystery, something that really draws in the reader and keeps them hooked for that short time, just to help people back into that habit of reading for fun. And if you like, Mark's gospel is the quick read of the gospels because these accounts and events come so thick and fast through these chapters of Mark, it's packed with incident, with sayings, with encounters, with healings, with events, and with some quite challenging stuff. And here is Jesus going about his daily ministry. Just before this passage, we've had that incident where he has to ask the disciples to get him a boat because the crowd is so enormous that he's afraid he'll be crushed by them. So he needs a boat so he can go out onto the lake and perhaps teach them from the boat and then peacefully row away. And then, just after that, we have the appointment of the twelve when Jesus calls to him and commissions that wonderful list of names, those people who will be with him faithfully, named as his closest disciples. And then immediately after that, it says, he went home again. He went home again. And once more, such a crowd collected that they could not even have a meal. For some reason, the way that we use the text in our lectionary, we lose the fact that at the beginning of this passage we're looking at this morning, it starts, he went home again. So after all these dramatic healings and incidents, the business with the crowd and the boat, the calling of the twelve, he went home again. And the crowd came together. And that's where our passage starts. So that they could not even eat. And then his family were worried. They couldn't even have a meal. And they thought perhaps they should restrain him, for people were saying he's gone out of his mind. And you can see that all these dramatic incidents, these healings, these sayings, and these, these encounters, these cures, these um, controversial things that Jesus is saying about things like picking corn on the Sabbath and working, and how you receive the tradition into which the religious tradition into which he's been born and which they all practice, how you receive that, how you live that out, you can see that it's the kind of thing that might cause a loving family to worry about somebody. You can completely understand why, especially if he's surrounded by such a big crowd that they can't even have something to eat. But then Jesus says something very significant at the end of this passage, and that's where I want to concentrate this morning. So he's continuing his teaching, and his mother and his brothers come and stand outside, and they call for him. And he's surrounded by a crowd who are listening to him, sitting around. You can just imagine them sitting there, hanging on his every word, waiting for his teaching, perhaps waiting to see the next dramatic event, the next big saying, the next healing, the next controversial argument. And his mother and his brothers and sisters are looking for him. And he says, who are my mother and my brothers? That's quite hard for us to hear, isn't it? 
It sounds like quite a significant rejection of his own family. It doesn't sit neatly and comfortably with our understanding of how we work together, live together, love one another in family structures in our society. But this is really important. At this moment, there's a kind of hinge. And it's a hinge that helps us to turn the page, to turn away from the insights of only relying on and living within the aegis of the old covenant, where one has to be born into being one of the children of God, being one of those special chosen people so beloved by God, to whom God has been so faithful over thousands of years, those who've given us the inheritance of the Hebrew scriptures. This is the moment, an important moment, where Jesus shows us something fresh, something new about what it means to be a child of God. That it's not only about being born into that particular lineage, that heritage, that faith, but that we too, even we, can be children of God by adoption and grace. And Jesus looks at those who are around him, those who've chosen to be there, whatever their motive, whether they came out of a pure spiritual search or to see the next big thing that was happening in their village. Jesus looks around him and says, here are my mother and my brothers. It's a very striking statement. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. That's us. That's you and I. We also are God's children by adoption and grace. We too inherit the wonders of this new covenant. In our baptism, we receive this grace to be God's children. In our creation as human beings, God holds us in the palm of his hand and receives us as his own. So what does it mean for us, seated around Jesus this morning, listening to this teaching, seeing this extraordinary truth worked out? What does it mean that whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother? Well, that takes us back to our reading from 2 Corinthians. This is also a really significant passage. You'll remember that just before the verses we heard from 2 Corinthians this morning, we hear from Paul that extraordinary image he gives us about holding the treasure of our faith in pots of earthenware. Pots of earthenware, earthen vessels, so fragile, so breakable, so mutable. And Paul goes on in the passage which we heard this morning to talk about the fragility of our human nature and our human existence, how we are afflicted, how we live daily with the reality of our own mortality. And yet he also shows us alongside that the assurance of our inheritance from God Although we live in earthly tents, although we are ourselves earthen vessels, fragile, breakable, unworthy, yet by God's grace, by God's embrace, we are drawn not only into this earthly family by baptism, but also into God's heavenly family that eternal family of the angels and saints, of all who have been faithful through the ages, where we find a home together, a home with Christ. So here is Jesus going about his daily ministry. And at the beginning of this passage, those words we lost, he went home again. As we go home again after this service, We're called not to turn away from those whom God has given us by birth and blood to be our earthly families, those who we love so dearly. 
but to know that the embrace of God's family is so much wider, so much deeper, so much bigger than we can even understand, than we can ever visualize. God's embrace is infinitely wide and draws each of us, earthen vessels as we are, dwelling in these fragile earthly tents. He draws each of us together to be nourished at the table of his generosity, to dwell together in his home, his house, to live with one another knowing that we are given to each other as brothers and sisters here. Now we are surrounded by our brothers and sisters in Christ. What a bond, what a fellowship, what a communion is ours. And the purpose of that communion is not just that we should know ourselves to be God's children by adoption and grace, but that we should take that understanding and that outpouring of love and nourishment from this table and go out and share that glory, the glory beyond all measure, which extends, as Paul writes in Corinthians, to more and more people that we may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Amen.